So first up, my background is different because I'm actually in Hawaii right now. My work sent me here because it's awesome. But I still wanted to do a video for you guys and I know that it's gonna go up a little later than usual because of the time change. I was tagged by my writing friend, Kristen Martin, to do an author tag video. So this will be a little different. I'm not gonna do writing tips and advice. It's more an about me video. So first up we have, where's your favorite place to write? So pretty much my favorite place to write is in my living room slash dining room area and I've actually been doing dictation lately so I will grab my microphone and have plenty of room to walk around while I'm dictating and pacing around and it helps to get the creative juices flowing. But I usually only do that when there's nobody home. So if Steven's home, I might write in the living room or in the bed, wherever is most comfortable. Question two, coffee or tea? I kind of like both, but I can't have any caffeine. So if I ever have any coffee, it's gotta be decaf coffee, and even then I can still tell there's caffeine in it. And then if it's any tea, it's, that's obviously a little easier to get decaf. But right now, my favorite tea flavor is, I think, jam and lemon, jam and ginger, or something like that. It tastes so good, it's delicious. But usually when I'm dictating, I actually drink water just to make sure I'm hydrated because you're talking a lot. Number three, a favorite book of all time. This one is definitely Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. It's such a sad ending to it, but I don't, I swear I read this book so many times growing up. It was ridiculous and I cried every single time I read it. Number four, NaNoWriMo, yes or no? Definitely yes, and if you've kept track of any of my other videos, you'll know that I've participated. Last year I did the Camp NaNoWriMo in July, and then the actual NaNoWriMo in November, and I'm an advocate for any of the NaNoWriMo's. I think it really helps you to almost gain self-confidence that you have the ability to write 50,000 words in a month, and that was something I didn't think that I could do until I did NaNoWriMo. Even if you don't continue to do it, I think it's really good just to make yourself realize that you can actually write that much. Number five, genre that you would write if you had no restrictions. I would one day really like to try writing thriller novels or any, any kind of novel like that. I grew up reading a lot of Clive Cussler novels. I really like Dan Brown. I just like that that type of novel and it's most of the stories that I think of are usually science fiction or fantasy YA. I think it would be really cool to one day write an adult fiction thriller of some kind, which my dad has actually been feeding me ideas on political thrillers that he doesn't want to write but he wants me to write and I think he should write them because I'm pretty sure they would be really good. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? I think I would want to be invincible. Not invisible, but invincible. Like, you wouldn't get hurt if you fell off a building or something. Because I'm really afraid of heights, so that would be a plus. If I fell, it wouldn't really do anything to me. And I think I would just have a lot more adventures if I wasn't worried about getting hurt all the time. And funny enough, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I sprained my neck two weeks ago, so I wouldn't have that problem if I was invincible. Number seven, favorite author. I am going to actually choose two different authors because I grew up reading both of them. And the first one is J.K. Rowling, and I don't even have to explain why. I mean, we were the same age as the children we were reading about. It's just magical. And then my second author would be Clive Cussler because I read all of his Dirk Pitt novels. I haven't actually read any of the, the other novels that he has, but all of the Dirk Pitt ones, I just read all of those when I was little. I love them. Number eight. What kind of music do you listen to when you write? If I'm not dictating, like if Stephen's home, or if I'm just doing kind of like outlining and stuff like that, I'll actually listen to instrumental music that doesn't have any words because, like Kristen Martin, I get really distracted when there's words. I like to sing to every song, and I know the lyrics to a lot of songs, so if a song comes on that I know, I try to sing to it. So if I'm writing a really dark scene, I'll choose really somber music to match that scene, or vice versa, if it's happy, I'll choose kind of like a beat instrumental music. And then on top of that, I have little playlists for each one of my characters, so sometimes if I'm having trouble with one of my characters, I'll just listen to some of the songs that they have, and I'll kind of get in their little, you know, their mood, their groove. And I've just recently started making little playlists of the instrumental tracks that I'm listening to. So if you want to check those out, they should be on my channel page. Number nine, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? I honestly think that I would just live in Florida, but I really like visiting places and seeing other cultures. I just know that I want to be close to my family because I know family is really important. And so I would just want to live where my family's at. If I moved to Germany, I would move to Germany in a heartbeat. I've actually lived in Germany before and Japan, but 
I just kind of want to live wherever my family's at. Number 10, what do you do if you get writer's block? I don't really get writer's block. I kind of get writer's hiccups where I, I know what I want to say, but I can't exactly put it into the words of like, say my character. So like I already said, I'll just listen to their soundtrack or something like that and kind of like get in the mood. I used to get really bad writer's block. Like I would just see that huge white space and I would panic and I wouldn't know what I want to say and it wouldn't be perfect so I wouldn't want to type it and all that good stuff. Since then, I really, really think that having an outline has helped tremendously because this is the first book that I've actually had an outline in and I haven't had any writer's block. So if you haven't tried doing an outline, I would completely try to do it. Um, a lot of people have had some success with the snowflake method and I kind of use like a modified version of that myself. So I'm not going to tag any specific person to do this video. I am tagging all of you that are watching it. If you haven't already done this author tag and if you make YouTube videos and even if you haven't before, just go ahead and do it and then you can post a link to it down below because I think it's a great way for all of us writers and authors to get to know each other a little better. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed my video for this week. Sorry, it's not exactly my Writing Wednesday videos, but I hope you enjoyed getting to know a little bit about me. So a little side announcement right now, I have my temporary cover right here. And my book is now on Goodreads and everything. It's titled for now, it might change, The Elysian Prophecy. But I plan on doing a cover reveal for you guys soon and I absolutely cannot wait because I just love the cover. So subscribe to stay tuned for updates. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. If you ever have any writing questions or personal questions, just not too personal, be sure to tweet me at Vivian Reese or you can just leave a comment down below, whatever you wanna do. And make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post new writing videos every Wednesday, except for today. Oops. Bye guys.